Hello there and welcome back to episode 37 of Koganagross, the Fortress by the Sea, Season 4 of the Savage Lands. So today we're going to continue our brave endeavor of building this bridge surface pillar thing. I have built another of the actual pillars for this thing, but then when I was uh, plotting out this further out into the ocean, I remembered all the horrible hiccups that I had with pathing issues, and then I decided to go one pillar at a time before I kill my FPS, and then I'd be very, very sad because I'd had to delete this thing again. And no, we're just going to keep it as it is here and continue these between the episodes or whatever might be comfortable. So, what I have for today on my mind is to continue my endeavors in completing the surface areas a little bit more. I am really disliking all that loamy sand here that we have. I feel like it's not really reflecting the splendor of this place anymore. So we're probably going to be starting to beauty up this place now on several other little nooks and crannies. It's really important for me that this fortress will have a nice look at the end. Also, I have stored all the building material here, so my constructors can now scuttle back and forth way more efficiently than ever before. Although my constructors of the castle are now way less efficient than ever before, but what can I do? Both projects will need Gabbro blocks, so hmm, I need... I cannot really store them effectively at two places at once, so I figured we're going to go for, for this then. Because the pillars themselves will be built mostly out of Gabbro, so I need to store Gabbro here in the close vicinity nearby. It's a thing that I cannot change. So, really looking forward to the completion of this project, especially when the pumps will finally spurt out water here. That will be a glorious moment for me. Oh, man. But we're still quite far away from that, and sadly, there's still a lot way, a lot more to do. It's worst for me are all those building projects that are left unfulfilled because we're just not getting the jobs done quick enough. So, let's see what I can optimize down here. Hmm? So, here at the Stonecutter's Workshop, we could increase the amount of wheelbarrows, so the amount of uh, Gabbro blocks that we got lying around is increasing as well. It's the best uh, shot that I got. But apart from that, this uh, fortress is running well. We have our typical 16 unhappy people here. That's uh, somewhat like a constant here. But well, what I want to do here in between as well is I want to task the royal engraver with a couple of new jobs, beauty up those apartments. There we go. This should make people happier as well. Can also engrave built uh, constructed walls. For some reason, yeah, okay, this part has been engraved, the rest has not. Yeah. I have slight hopes that increasing the value of the the apartment blocks like this could ease down the dwarves. I mean, if I would be really power gaming for their happiness, I would be, of course, specifically targeting these apartments and beauty up the apartments only of the dwarves in question, so they get a lot of good thoughts when they head back home the next time. Just as food for thought if you are struggling with that and you like the idea. So... Oh, whoopsie, I need to cancel that one. So... I'm also wondering what kind of uh, export artic uh, article the... Fortress of Kogana Ross is uh, supposed to be famous for. Is it fish? Well, we're not we're not fishing anything. Is it gold? We got lots of gold. I think that would fit into the narrative quite well, huh? 
So there has been also the question whether or not my bedrooms are assigned to the uh, tavern or not. You guys were right. They were not assigned to the tavern. I only thought I did that. So we need to, to link those to the geared olive. Wait a sec. I hate it when they do that. So... Why are these named differently here? Ah, no, because we have three of them by now. And... These are already linked. They are. And that's the thing that I'm that I'm uh, really wondering about. This is the mayor. And good thing that I checked. Ah, well, it is a fresh job. I was like, oh, I almost missed a a new order of leggings, but no, these are these are the most recent order. Oh, it's the most recent. Uh, order of leggings, so, Her Highness, what the hell are we going to do with all those leggings? I don't like have an idea though already. I mentioned it already in the last episode. Alright, so I already ordered these to be made out of Gabbro instead of glass because I figured that we don't need to do this to ourselves anymore, you know. So... That is fine progress. The only thing I'm bothered with is that nothing here gets done at all, but well. I can't get everything done at once, I guess. It's just hard to discern which uh, jobs are, are frozen and bugged and which ones are just, you know, not, not done yet. This is really something I have a hard time discerning. So, my cobaltite vein mining <laughs> is reaching, it's hitting its limits. There seems to be almost none left here in this uh, area. So let's order some new mining here. There we go. Hopefully this will get us somewhere. I mean, a lot of the pathways are already done, but obviously we don't have enough cobaltite for the entire place yet, sadly. Okay, but look at that! Can finally order new areas here. Ah, oh, it's so good. Okay. So it turns out that storage stockpile here has sped up things tremendously. Been really surprised that this location was by now no longer feasible, but check it on the map. It is a really long distance by now. This is what I keep uh, noticing. It's so easy to underestimate these things. And be not aware of the scope of things. Let's build a new staircase. There it goes. This one has to wait. But well, at least things are getting done now. So I have high hopes that with one or two episodes ahead of us, we are finally going to start working towards our pump stacks. I'm really positive about that. I mean, technically, after that, I could play this fortress on and make it the next mountain home, but I've already elaborated a episode or two ago, or open, that I don't deem this a proper mountain home location. It's not even a mountain here. I'll build a mountain home in this series. I think this could uh, really 
post up the finale of the series as well, because I'm eager to try out a new world at some point as well, you know. I like this project, but it's been my very first saga project, and there's a couple of things that I'd be doing different next time. Just as a couple of thoughts. But yeah, this ain't Mountain Haim, Mountain Haim, Mountain Home location. Dear brain. Good. So the leather leggings have been made, so her highness doesn't have to go crazy about it anymore. And oh, this part is almost done, my friends. So after that, we'll have to think about the question how the pillars will be composed. I don't want to have them floors in between because I feel like that would be really a a horrible ordeal, but that would also mean that I'd be needing to build them layer by layer, because if I don't have any floor in between, there there will be no option for them to reach the walls. Oh, it's such a such a nasty thing. So my idea was that we're going to work with some stone type that I haven't worked with yet procure that in larger amounts, and work with a floor system that will save me from going crazy. Because otherwise I will. I really know that. Ah, that's where part of my stonecutter's capacity is going into. The floors of Koganaros are being remade. Of course, silly old me. Didn't notice that. So, what type of stone could be a good candidate for that. Where do I have stupidly huge amounts of, which are not Gabbro, because obviously I, I need to save that. And ideally, it'd be something that is not too far away from the city, so I don't have that insanely high hauling effort. Dolomite. Yes, Dolomite, my friends. Dolomite is the answer. We have so much of that stuff here available still. We can totally go for a big, fat strip mining operation here. And this is only the very first layer of this stuff. All right, we're going to work with Dolomite blocks and Gabbro. Dolomite, Gabbro, Dolomite, Gabbro. I'm considering using different colors so I can, can have a visual indicator on which level I am currently at. But I think it'll work because I'll be simply using the dolomite together with glass if I need another form of distinction. Now, we're going to set this up as our dolomite storage. Obviously, we need that. I love how in this game, business never stops. As long as you have ideas, business never stops. I love this. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna carve out larger areas here as well. But that's... Uh, that's for someday else. <laughs> Another set of leggings. More leggings, you wrist! More leggings! need to have the ultimate pair of leggings. So speaking about which, we still got plenty of time for today's episode. Let's head to Her Highness's apartments and do something which I wanted to do a long time ago already. So we're going to procure a new batch of rock salt here. And we're going to add a new wing to Her Highness's tomb. You might already guess where this is ending, eh? So, but I figured that this is the ideal way of uh, illustrating the insanity of this woman. And it's time to engrave this place. make the inside of the royal tomb even more valuable. 
I swear, if this woman travels after me in the next into the next fortress, and I have to rebuild all this again, and I have to deal with her fetish for leggings uh, all the time again, I'm going crazy. This queen is giving me PTSD already ahead uh, of her time. So, well, officially they're um they're starting to build these walls soon. Yeah, right. Nice. So, well, we're making big progress there, nevertheless. Nevertheless. So, next step, we're going to allow Dolomite or non economic jobs otherwise it would be bad and now of dolomite because we're not cutting enough rock blocks already you know we, we need more of these this time the blocks of dolomite this fortress is going bonkers in terms of stone cutting but it is as it is we are going to store, of course, dolomite blocks here in the future as well. And now I have three different colors that I can use for the floors. I really think I'll need that, otherwise I'll go insane because I have no chance of discerning the last uh, um, floor from or the previous from the next. Here in the fortress area, I bit the bullet of doing this like I do it here. Out of one simple reason, I want a uniformist look up here. That's the only reason why I'm, do why I'm doing this to myself. I want that uniformist look because I think it's awesome. But otherwise, hell no. I'd be not doing this to myself. <laughs> Alright, so speaking about doing things to myself, we're making fine progress here and it's time to head back to the city and see if my mining dwarfs were already busy dwarfs yes they are brilliant so this is uh we're, we're going to take operations next level oops so more stone workers simply more stone workers there we go so eight more of these i'm not going to increase the number further because I think it's going to get grotesque at this point, and even more than I'd actually need. And the unhappiness in the fortress is stacking up. I gotta keep an eye on that. I mean, it could be, and that's what I'm personally suspecting, that the people working out here on the bridge are increasingly unhappy. But we should have a check here. Soldier, no activity. Mayor is part of the copper oranges squad now that's not right we don't have a copper oranges squad now i'm properly confused so let's double check that we only have copper tenderness and there's no Whatever. So he's part of the Bronze Mornings. He has been part of the Bronze Mornings. Alright. They want to be with family. They want to acquire objects. They want to craft an object. But nothing that is out of the ordinary is uh, happening to them. Alright. Well. If this number gets closer to 30, I gotta check uh, what I what I have to do. Up until then, I'll take it as a statistical fluke. I mean, we could technically make the unhappy dwarves craft something, you know? But I'll only do that as soon as they spiral deeper into anger. It's a lot of micromanagement to do so. I know various ways of uh, making my dudes happier, but at the end of the day I often skip on these because of the sheer amount of micromanagement behind it. Alright, the tavern rooms, look at them! Oh, I'm so happy. 
Seeing this fortress in this dimension grow is making me especially happy. So here we have again those weird floors which are never being done. And it's so horrible. I mean, there's open space here. It's, it, it's invisible. I hate this so much. I mean, I don't even know where the spots of open space are anymore. But for some reason, these jobs just don't get fulfilled. I have no clue what the hell's wrong with them, but they are unfulfillable. This happens quite regularly, and if somebody knows what the hell is going on there, please let me know. Be so kind and let me know, because I'd really be super happy to know what the hell's gone wrong with these work orders. I mean, my personal assumption is it's just a bug. Second assumption is, if I'd be just waiting long enough, they'd be, uh, they'd be getting that done as well. I'm just impatient, and for some reason, one of these guys is just not getting there. There's several reasons how this could come together. Alright, so this guy, he wants to be a fighter, so we're going to assign our friend Muthkot here into military service. Nothing easier than that. I'm so happy that the uh, the effect dudes finally introduced search query bars for for this uh, for this part of the game. So good. Finally, I, I finally only need to memorize the name of the dude, and we're done. So let's see if Muthkot is going to be happier now that he can fight and train. So this guy, Paul, wants to be fighter as well. They're all from previous uh, squads, and I think, yeah, the Lands of Faith. These guys come from Shin Mistum. They're used to fighting. They're unhappy because they cannot fight. This is one of the parts I love, where I feel like this game's uh, love for detail is insane. This guy is really going depressed because he was a professional fighter in a previous fortress of mine, and he has to live the life of a civilian, and that's why he's unhappy fella. Let's help him out on that. We have plenty of killing to do. Worst case scenario, we're going to fish up a fourth squad that we're going to station somewhere downstairs. Indigo Tourmaline. I haven't seen that one before. So we're even raking in some new types of gemstone here. But I think, I'm afraid... Oh! We can actually dig that out still. Nice. Oh yeah. I thought like they sound valuable. And I was right. They are valuable. Hell yeah. Nice. That's a good stash. So it turns out my dolomite project is not only raking in new blocks to work with, it's also raking in new gemstones to work with. Love that. It's one of the good things, strip mining always uh, ends up with bringing in new resources to work with. Okay. So, technically we should see some dolomite blocks up here as well soon. No? Yeah, I have ordered them. They're not being delivered yet though. Well, this is still huge progress here. I mean. It would be smarter, though, to stop the construction here and uh, force the construction at the sea bridge first, instead of doing pro two projects at once. I'm well aware about it, but I can't stop myself from doing so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right, about that. Hmm. This wasn't the floorboard yeah, I was expecting. Whatever. I'll leave it like that for now. I don't mind. Um, I'm honestly happy that at least there is a piece of floor now that I can easily discern later from the rest of it. <laughs> it has its uh, clear advantages. Okay, let's order the remaining walls. Look at that! They they managed to wall off this place without, without big 
screw ups. I'm proud of my little blokes. Good. So now they need to get that done more regularly though. So snatchers protect the children. Protect the snatchers? They're suckers. So we're going to send one squad after these, and another squad will just uh, check out how the situation is here. Yeah, they're just running away. Okay. So, turns out that little bloke had a run-in with uh, one of my axe wolves. Whoopsie! So... There is not much goblin left, but I realize that... This hole in the ground here is really alerting me. I don't like that. Make coat from bituminous coal, now that's an old assignment that I don't want to have anymore. Or is it? We don't need that. We have magma workshops. We can totally ignore that. Right. Way better. So yeah, a lot of constructors are now grabbing their blocks from the wrong side, so to say. Slowing down one project, speeding up the other project. It's a really, really annoying thing, but, well, it is as it is. That's why I'm not pressuring the construction of the surface rooms too much. To a certain degree, I want to get done with it and get things started, but this place here is the real, the real big deal, you know? Okay. But... It's reaching completion. It is reaching completion. So I can safely assign two more um, pullers on this, uh, between this and the next episode. We're going to get ourselves that staircase done. And then I only need to design out a pump stack design for this entire thing here. It's one of the few things that I haven't done yet. So I think I'm going to widen the foundation of these by two grids so I have enough space for the water generator creating the power for the pump stack. And then I'll be constructing the pump stack inside of the pillar. I think that's the most elegant solution that I could come up with because everything else would result in another construction that I would need to go for. And I think it's a really cool technical feat to have the um, water transportation inside of the pillars. That idea totally, uh, totally you know, stuck with me. So the only thing I don't like about it is that we are not capable of shutting down the machinery. This will be permanently uh, working when we're using water generators. But at the end of the day, it won't be that much of a big deal because up here on the bridge, once these uh, aqueduct channels are filled, there will be no more water moving. If a, if a body, if a, uh, if, a, if a structure, however you want to call it, is filled to the brim with water, the game stops moving water and it's done with it. But on the other hand, we'll have it flowing constantly into that direction, so uh, well, we'll see about that. This might become an FPS nightmare when it's running. <laughs> but whatever. I mean, what does make me happy here at this end is I have managed to keep the FPS alive. So I've uh, successfully tuned down whatever things were hogging massive amounts of FPS. They're not bothering us anymore. We are actually making pretty fine progress here. 
So, the caravan from our dwarven friends has come. The wealth of the entire continent is saying hi. And this is where I am saying goodbye, my friends. So, see you all in the next episode. Feel free to make a comment, leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing. I really, really enjoy having you guys, and I hope you were enjoying the show as much as I did. We're going to continue next time with a couple of extra foundation blueprints, and we'll see what happens in between. A big thanks here to the supporters of the channel. I deeply, deeply appreciate your help, and if you want to check out how to support the channel ideally there's patreon paypal and buy me a coffee as the topmost links in the description box also links to the entirety of the playlist to all the other seasons of the savage lands and a lot of other goodies so thanks for being around thanks for watching this video until the very end and i hope you're having a great day see you soon bye bye